Hey friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here, and on today's review for you, it's the newest IPA from Pabst. Captain Pabst Seabird IPA is a 4.5% IPA from Pabst Brewing Company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I know this isn't craft beer, but John over at sombeer.com asked if I wanted to try this beer. He had an extra can left over. And for me, it's just enough of an oddity that I wanted to give it a try and show it to you guys on the channel. Now, from what I've read, Paps is trying to move into the craft beer market, and this whole Captain Paps thing, this is their opening volley. Seabird IPA is their first product under the Captain Paps name, and it seems like they're trying to capture a part of that whole crushable IPA trend that we've been seeing lately we'll probably see moving into the summer. They're using Magnum, Citra, Cascade, and Mosaic hops in this one. So let's see if this can measure up and if Paps knows how to do this whole thing right. So let's get started with the traditional, you know, inspection of the label. We'll get it into a glass. Fun fact, Frederick Paps was a ship captain before he married into the family that owned the Milwaukee-based brewing company. And the Seabird was the last ship that he captained. Also note, this beer is going to be rolling out, or it's already rolled out in Illinois and Wisconsin. No word on when you can expect to see it here in Michigan, but again, John from sombeer.com gave me this can. You know, we just wanted to try it out, just see, just see what I thought of it. So the can is actually really cool. I really like the design. It looks really a lot more sophisticated than, you know, maybe Pabst has looked in the past. It's this dark navy blue. It's a matte blue. I love matte colors on labels. And this one has gold writing all over it. Really invokes this captain vibe here. And across the top, it says Captain Pabst has a picture of a horseshoe and a sextant. And on the side, it says Huron Comet with a, a cheese with a bow on it and a barrel with some barley and stuff wrapped around it. If you, if you know what the significance of the cheese is, let me know. So then it says Excellence and Aptitude. Seabird IPA, Milwaukee steered and anchored, brewed in Verona, Wisconsin. And then on the one side here, it has the latitude. On the other side, it has the longitude. The Seabird, a weather-torn ship forced aground, gave way to a legend in brewing, Captain Frederick Pabst. And that has Captain Pabst written here. On the other side, it says Pabst Brewing Company, one pint of ale, 4.5% alcohol by volume. Then, of course, the government warning information. And across the bottom, it says recyclable aluminum. This can is a little bit beat up. You'll notice in the, in the close-ups, but, you know, this is what we got. So. Let's go ahead and crack this one open. It also, just to kind of match, it has the matte navy color, but on the top of the can, it's gold. It matches, it just matches exactly the label, like the writing on the label. So I'm gonna grab a Tiku glass here today for this one, the my draft therapy Tiku glass. Let's go ahead and crack this one open, put a nose on it. Not a very large pop out of the can when, when cracking it, but it did pop. So let's go ahead and smell it. Okay, it's got a bit of a dank kind of aroma to it. Not what I was expecting. I was expecting it to be really kind of light on the on the aroma, really just kind of not much smell at all. But it's not that bad. It smells um getting a bit like I said, a little bit of a dankness. There is this like slight piney tinge to it. It smells like a it almost honestly smells like a hop lager. Like it has more of a lagery kind of smell to me, but it has a little bit of dankness, a little bit of that piney kind of aroma. So let's go ahead and pour this. Okay, I like the color out of it too. It's it's kind of like an orangish yellow coming out of the can, collecting in the glass, as you can see here. It is more of a kind of orange, golden orange, a little bit darker than yellow, a little bit closer to orange, but it is got has a nice golden color, about a finger and a half worth of head. The head is a little bit off white. It's not too bright white, but it's not... Um, it's not tan, so it's right in the middle. It's just like an off-white, just a maybe a tinge toward orange. The head's hanging on pretty decently. It's about to a finger now. I'm just gonna pour a little bit more in here. And we'll hold it up to the light here. It is, um, I can see the logo on the glass here, and I can see my fingers through it, not a lot of detail. It is a little hazy. It's got a little bit of kind of like, you know, maybe sediment floating in suspension, a little bit of carbonation rising up, but the head has, has stayed on pretty well, so let's go ahead and put a better nose on the glass here. Oof. You know, I'm getting a little bit more of a citrus note here than I was getting out of the can. It smells a lot more like an IPA now. It smells actually kind of a little bit, I'm going to say it smells a little bit juicy. It has a little bit of a juicy aroma to it. 
the head seems like it's dissipating more. I keep mentioning the head, but you know, it's kind of dissipating more over time. But yeah, it smells a little bit sweet. It has an orange sweetness, a citrus sweetness. It doesn't smell so dank out of the glass here. And my voice sounds like it's killing me. So I'm ready to get a drink of this and, and hopefully replenish the vocal cords. Cheers. Hmm. It's got a bit of a, yeah, my voice sounds better. <laughs> it has a bit of this dry, kind of bready quality on the tail end, but the, there is bitterness here. Um, it's got the aftertaste I'm getting is a little bit of a piney resinous, but let's start from the top. I'll get a better drink. We'll start from the top, talk about what I just get, and then we'll work through that. Got a whole much in. So up front, it has quite a bit of flavor, actually, for 4.5%. That's what I've been saying about all these like really crushable IPAs, is that the lower ABVs don't lend themselves to a lot of taste. This one actually has quite a bit of taste. It's not super sweet. The aroma gives me the idea that it would be a lot sweeter than it is. But it does have a really nice orangey flavor up front, not so much sweet. It's almost like a, a little bit of a drier orange flavor. Uh, it's not like a bursting orange or a bursting like orange juicy or a juicy flavor, but it's not like a traditional, it's not what I would think of as like a West Coast uh, IPA. It's not bitter like that. It's almost the, the flavor itself is almost more like a pale. So it's not as intense. It's a little bit more of a lighter flavor. But I'm really impressed with this. I, I was not, for, again, 4.5%, not expecting a whole lot. It has a lot of um, actual flavor. And I know that, you know, talking about these lower ABV beers, most of the lower ABV beers that I've been talking about have been a percent lower. So you also have to take that in mind. But this has a lot more flavor than a lot of those have had. Uh, it also has a lot of flavor, you know, just as an IPA. Like, it's not, I wouldn't drink this if I didn't know the ABV, you know, percentage i wouldn't be drinking this and thinking to myself wow that's that's really good for a lower abv beer when i drink this if i if i didn't know the abv i would just drink this and say that's a pretty good beer i mean obviously it's not like paps doesn't know what they're doing uh as subsequent drinks the flavor is kind of it's receding a little bit but the bitterness that i'm getting on the tail end is this piney resinous kind of bitterness, hoppy bitterness, which is really kind of surprising because I only got the little piney note, the aroma out of the opening of the can. But once I poured it, I didn't get any of that. So I'm actually really surprised at how much pine, piney bitterness comes through on the tail. But yeah, I mean, I'm just really impressed with this. I, I was not expecting it to be nearly this good. It has, it's way better than it has any right to be. Again, not that Pabst wouldn't know what they're doing. Obviously, they've been in brewing with, you know, the Blue Ribbon beer for for ages, uh, as far back as I can remember. I mean, I I don't know a time when Pabst Blue Ribbon wasn't a beer out there. But, you know, and obviously they bring in new talent. It's not like the same, you know, 95-year-old guys back shoveling, you know, uh, malt and stuff into the, into the, you know, into the brew kettle or whatever, into a big paint bucket that they're heating over a campfire. That Obviously, that's not happening. They happening they bring people in that obviously know what they want to do but if this is their first foray into the whole craft beer scene and they're putting out their beer these smaller guys better look out because this is super crushable got a lot of flavor again i'm just really surprised this is a really good first first shot across the bow of craft beer this is really good. Like if if I didn't wasn't so invested in craft beer and I don't know the price point on this, that wasn't something that I know about. But if this is low priced, if they can get this out for a low price, I think that the smaller breweries, you know, if they're trying to distribute, they might have some, you know, something to worry about here. All right, friends, that has been Seabird IPA from Pabst. Do you have any interest in this one or do you have a favorite low ABV IPA or maybe just low ABV beer in general? Let me know in the comments down below while you're down there. If you like beer, you might want to subscribe and click that bell because I'm here talking about beer twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's all for free for viewers just like you. And you might miss your next favorite if you're not subscribed. 
So until next time, I'm Sean from Draft Therapy. Thanks for stopping by. And remember, drink craft beer, support your local breweries, even if this one isn't local or craft beer. And don't forget to treat yourself to a little draft therapy. Thanks for watching. Cheers.